Hello, hello, hello. How's everybody doing? Well, as you can see by the title of this video, I'm just going to go over how I won a million dollars playing DraftKings. Best ball, Millie Maker. Simple as this. Draft good players. End of video. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, my strategies that I implemented we are pretty standard around the uh, society at this point, you know, drafting stacks, you know, I took the liberty of drafting every morning. There were still like edges there. I don't know if it, there's much anymore, but it was, uh, you'd always catch one or two people not paying attention in those morning drafts slash auto drafting. And if you auto draft on DraftKings, your, well, at least this is how it was the first year. I don't know if they still do this. Your whole entry is null and void. You don't get your money back, but you do not win anything. So I'm not taking that chance. So I don't think I've ever missed a pick on DraftKings unless it was like spotty Wi-Fi, but I made sure to get back on. You know what I mean? Like I didn't miss two picks in a row. I was not. I was not about the about that mess. And so I drafted every day. I won a 50k tournament, super lucky. Uh, I think it was May 29th of the previous year, which is kind of funny because I won 50k like four days later this year. Anywho, uh, won a won 50k, and for those who don't know me, I was a pizza delivery guy for 10 years. I just you know got a job. At, well, not just I've, I've been with there four years now, but like uh, as a policy analyst for an insurance company they don't pay they didn't pay the greatest they just give us a huge like upgrade pay or like through the whole company so finally they're starting to pay people but i think it's because they had half of our workforce quit or resign and so anyways whole nother story they treat me well there i'm not leaving so unless i win another milli but that's for another that's for another day. Uh, they, uh, so, anyways, back to the meat, meat and potatoes here. So that I wasn't, you know, I'm not like these people, these high rollers that are dropping 2K and have confidence, you know, like, oh, it'll be all right, whatever. I got the cash value. I, I didn't have that. So, like, I took, this is, I mean, I, I did this for serious. I, I, like, I took every one of my, every one of my opportunities very seriously. Like I took every draft and I wanted to win every draft. I didn't care about week 17 because I knew if I had good teams that it would just come out the other side as a plus value. And I knew that uh, I drafted a little bit extra uh, or a little extra. I drew, I drafted a little more when certain news would come out and I would like, that sounds like some BS, and I would know that 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 ADP was going to fall, and I would scoop up that you know up that value. For instance, notably the main the main one, which Jamar Chase not being able to catch the ball or see the ball right or whatever, and he had a few bad weeks, so like it kept getting worse and worse, and I'm just like, I wasn't like letting it fall too like. I would let it fall just a little bit longer, like each time, like one extra pick. And if I didn't get them, I'd bring it back the next, like the next, the uh, next draft and make sure I get them. Uh, I also f somewhat believe in the, uh, the quarterback receiver, like gelling together. Like I think that's a, a good thing. Yeah. You know, I'm not saying like every quarterback and the receiver, if they're having breakfast, I'm not saying that they're going to have, this uh, connection that's unbreakable or anything like that. But Cooper Cup and Matt Stafford, like, I mean, I won 50K like four years ago, three years ago uh, with Cooper Cup. So, like, he was already on my – I like him already, and I know he's better than Robert Woods. He just hasn't had, like, a good quarterback. And then when I heard that, that they were, you know, having breakfast together – Maybe it's the, the incorrect way to, to do my analysis, but I saw that as a good thing. 
he didn't hear anything about Robert Woods. You know, Woods is a good good player. He's like the top twelve with a good quarterback. He's gonna f- sink with Ryan Tannehill, in my opinion. But yeah, sorry for another day. Uh so I had two edges right there, in my opinion, because I had him in my rankings a whole round before everybody else did. And I'm a, I'm a bit of a boomer, I guess, when you would say, I want my running backs early. Now, again, boomer take, I was like really hard on Derrick Henry. Uh, the reason I was high on Derrick Henry was because that he had a new offensive coordinator and they wanted to work in the pass game with him. So I was like, well, that's like the only thing he needs to like upgrade on. And he's only gotten better as a player at this point. So. I saw Derrick Henry, you know, at almost every pick I would just take. I was, like, was flat out taking him. So I had, knew I had an edge there. So three players already that I knew that I was going to have more than everybody. Oh, come to my fourth fish-ish areas. Like, I wanted to make sure I had an, an elite tight end of some sort. So or somebody who had, like, elite upside. So I had a Gronk, I had Mark Andrews, TJ Hawkinson. I had a bunch of Donson Knox as my second tight end be- just because uh, I knew, like, it was pretty evident that Dawson Knox and Gabriel Labors, at least in that playoff game against the Texans, were, there was the one whenever he lateral, like, lateral it, lateral, I can't say that word for some reason. He lateraled it, he pitched the ball off to Dawson Ox and uh, he uh, it's like he wanted to get the balls into those two's hands and then it's like I knew Gabe Davis or uh, Stephon Diggs is going to get his like it's but this was like starting to turn into a pass happy offense and you could kind of see it happening and it's like well those are the two other guys that I thought would like leap forward and obviously Gabe Davis did but not you know the entire season and I think he's going to this year. Again, different different day. We'll go over that. Um, so I, was like, I had an edge there. <clears throat> and I know that the best ball community in general is pretty smart drafting stacks and whatnot. But you'd be surprised on how many people on DraftKings are not doing that. So don't expect – one, I assume I'm better than half the population of drafting on on best ball or on DraftKings. It, it, but I think you have to have that confidence if you're if you like the NFL and you follow NFL DFS and those kind of things. You have to have the assumption I'm probably better than most of you, and I and I feel that way. If I go into a tournament, I know I'm better than half of you. That's the mindset I have. Maybe it's a stupid mindset. But if I was only thinking I was barely better than half the people, I'd play 50-50. I wouldn't play a tournament. You know what I mean? I think I'm smarter than most people. Not, I don't have any numbers to back it up. You know, like, I've just been drafting lineups, NFL lineups for my entire life, you know, in a weird way. Or at least it feels that way for the last 14 years. So... I felt like I had an advantage there. Just natural ability to draft and very they have a variation of those lineups of those people that I liked. I had a bunch of Michael Pittman. Like I like it's like I knew that you need to have this is how I approach it now. Not everybody's gonna approach it this way, and that's okay. There's Liam Liam, the best ball winner on underdog. He and I won it completely two different ways, which goes to show there's no right way to do this. There's no like set stone on how to accomplish winning the Millie Maker. You could win it in any sort of way. In fact, um, I had a completely different team than the second place team kind of thing. You know what I mean? Like there's no right way. There's no golden key. There's, 
you know, this year everybody's on week 17. I didn't focus on week 17. You know what I focused on? Drafting the best players available, scooping up some value, and having player stands. Like, that's how I want it. Not saying that it's going to work again. I am doing the same thing again, but that's because it worked for me. You got to do what works for you. I know that I know receivers better than most people. I've been watching a lot of football my entire life. I know that I can draft wide receivers better than most people. I understand situations. I understand offenses. Like, I know what the general idea, what offenses are going to be thinking most of the time. Also, you got to look at the defenses. Again, sorry for another day. Uh, I get a little off topic sometimes. Anywho, uh, so most of the season, draft season last year, I uh, was taking, you know, I drafted one in the morning. And if I, you know, was feeling good and uh, might, might draft one at night. And uh, mainly I had, uh, I would do one morning, uh, one fast draft in the morning. And if I was with my kids, like on a Tuesday, typically, because that's my day off typically, uh, which is switching to Friday soon. That's exciting. Um, I would I would start up a slow draft because kids fast draft, two kids is, is just a lot to handle. <laughs> so, so last year we do you know one every morning, and I would typically be in the same lobbies with the same auto drafter or you know same people in general. I think I was in the same lobby as the chess is okay guy who is, a, is a, he's a smart guy. So I made fun of him on on. The Spike Week bro, Best Ball Bros, but obviously that dude is a whole on a whole nother level. And he said he retired and stuff like that. So I would assume if he took it seriously and devoted more time to it, I'm sure he'd be better than me or something. I don't know. Everybody has an equal opportunity to, to draft the best teams out there. Again, off topic. <laughs> uh, so... Uh, naturally I drafted every day and so my teams would vary based on like information that would come through the news. So, but most of my teams had the same core players. Now I'm big on core players because I mean, if you try, if you, let's say you're playing the Millie maker for week one, how do you approach it? You say, who, who's got the best, the best team, like the best way to, win this week, right? Well, in my head, who's got the best way to win this year? What gives them that opportunity? One, Jamar Chase is a flat-out like God in, in, in my eyes as like a receiver. Like He's a, the perfect build. He had played with that quarterback. He, you know, he was an amazing talent. And him not catching the ball right away. I mean, the guy took a year off and he had played for, you know, played any ball. So, yeah, he's going to be rusty. Yeah, he's going to make an excuse. Even if he had, like, done it, I'm sure he would have come up with something, you know, like, hey, it's just taking me a minute to get back to the rhythm of things. You know what I mean? Like, uh, sometimes reports are a little off. Let's just let's put it that way. And, uh, so I, you know, come around uh, late July, early August, I'm smashing them a lot more. I come down with COVID, so I'm definitely smashing them, even even more at this point. So, uh, and I have nothing else to do but focus on football. And you know, it's like we were uh, we made a cross country road trip, <laughs> and uh, so I was smashing a bunch of drafts while we were driving, and then at, you know family houses and wherever we were just smashing drafts left and right not nah, yeah i had hopes to win a million dollars but i had no idea that you know I just figured a shark would win it you know what i'm saying like i'm just a regular guy so if this is any inspiration to you you could win it too it's not like i'm this guy with all this mad genius intelligence you know what i mean like like herzig or Liam or chess is okay, or you know, all these people who are who are giga bringing it, you know. Me, I listen to Pat Mayo during football season just about every other day, if not every day. I listen to the Friday podcast with him and uh, the two betters. I listen to him with obviously Jeff and uh, 
Why am I thinking? I, I can't think. Andrew Cut. What's his first name? I don't know. Andrew Cust. Uh, Tim. I couldn't think of Tim Andrew Cust. All right. Anywho, uh, I listened to them. I was like, I listened to him and Jake Seeley. It's like, and it kept coming back around to, to Pat, like saying, you know, just, just draft good players. We know who's going to be good. And, and it's very silly to think, like, what well, the, we know who's good, but like, really think about it. It's like, okay, we know this guy has talent. So draft talented guys in good situations and draft talented guys with the potential of being in good situations. Like that's how you have to think about it. Don't draft these average guys who aren't going to blow, you know, like they're just going to middle in the water. They might get you a couple points here, a couple points there, or they might have a good game. I want the guys that are going to put up points, that are going to win the weeks. The ones that are, would, would win a Millie Maker in a regular season. Well, he didn't say – because he didn't – I don't think he really top covered best ball too much last year. But his main takeaway was just draft good players. And as silly as that it sounds, it's true. Like, I drafted nothing but good players. Everybody was – the best ball community was shitting on uh, Leonard Fournette. I love Leonard Fournette at the Jags, like, because he was always, and of course, he was on my regular fantasy football teams, and I'm like, he's actually really great in, like, PPR. Because he was just going to catch all these one-yard outs or uh, screens from Gardner Minshew. I'm like, this guy can catch the ball. And if I know one thing about Tom Brady, he will check it down if it's not there. And he'll take a seven-yard gain or a five-yard gain. Well, guess what? That's exactly what happened. And so now this year he's going in the second round, which I am not getting, but again, for another day. Uh, so I, I felt like I just had all these edges on these players, and I just kept taking them, taking them, taking them. So I ended up with all these monster teams because I kept taking the same players but with different, like, player here, different player there. So like it was almost like identical teams, you know, except for one player there, one player here. So when I came down to like a week before the playoffs, I think we can show it here now. It was like throughout the season. Let's see here. I was having team. I had October nineteenth. I had hundred and I had eighty five teams, either first or second, and. That was like out of 209 teams. And to be fair, my $3 teams were all joke teams. Like I was just messing around. So if you take out 20, I mean, I was pretty much, I was pretty much there kind of thing. And then let's see here. So I would, then I was like, I, I feel like people were like, it's like, Bad luck to show your teams. I, I don't care. I'm not superstitious. If my team's good, it's good. It's going to die if it's going to die kind of thing. Oh, let's see here. It's like I had like rain of like these monster teams that were just sitting on my bench because I just had so many like good plays on my teams. I had a bunch of Debo apparently. I, going back through all my teams, I had a bunch of Debo. <laughs> so first movie. It's like 82 in November. So we're one month away from playoffs. At this point, Henry is already out. But I still had 82 teams that were in first or second. And then I went up. So then I was like super confused because I had Derrick Henry on a lot of teams. So I'm like getting nervous. I'm like, oh, boy, like this is going to be bad. Like there's like a few more weeks left. But maybe I can just like, get paid out from all these teams that are like in the in like the middle waters. Like, like, maybe I built enough lead to get all these teams through. It's okay. If I don't win anything, I'll take the, like, I think it's like $2,000 that I'd win if they only just, like, went into the first round. I was okay with it. I was like, it, it, it could be worse. So that was one month away. So one week later, we took a little dip. We was like, okay, we're down to 85. First or second, I think I'm going to have a big dip, Nick, big dip next week, not having Cooper next weekend. So feeling even more anxious because I wasn't going to have my, my Cooper Cup shares. If we look at this team, holy cow, dude. Uh, what a team. What a team. 
<laughs> I said I was winning this league by 300 points. They would have to score 350 points to out, like unseed me. So it's kind of silly. Uh, so we're we're coming down towards the end. A couple sniper clips. Okay, so we have like two weeks left, I think, at this point, and we're down. Yeah, I forgot to upload last week. Blah blah blah. It was the start of my big dip. I'm now 73 of 213. Again, I think I had a couple basketball teams I added, but uh, got two more weeks, and I'm hoping to at least have 50. So I was shooting, you know, a huge dip, a huge, huge dip. Remember, we didn't have Cooper Cup that previous week, so we knew it was going to be bad. And I hit a little parlay, at, you know, low money because it was what it was. So then my highest scoring team, Going into the playoffs. Because I think I think he had asked about it. Let's see your favorite advancing team. So I put, of course, my highest advancing team. It, it was this monster of a team. Monster of a team. I beat this league by like over 500 points. It didn't have a bad player on it at that time. Oh, man. So the next, like, okay, we got one into the dance. And I was, you know, at this point, this is, I guess I didn't post, uh, I didn't post the first couple weeks of the uh, playoffs, possibly because it went terribly. I could not have tried to make a like, worse advance than rate right from the first week of the playoffs to the second week. And even that second week going into the finals, it was rough. I was down to one team into the finals out of all, like, I think it was, I think it was like 80. I ended up getting through or six, 69 of the 150 of the best ball millie maker. And I had 80 advance. Only one of those 80 got into the finals. And then going into the last night, I was that Sunday night. I was sitting at seventh place. Just about, I think it was seventh place or, or a little bit below. And uh, let's see here. Yeah, sitting a little bit below. And I knew that I had a shot because all these players, these guys that had players left, I guess uh, he didn't have anybody because that was the previous night. He had one player and he had one player. But those players, one was like DPJ and he had like, he had a. Uh, he had a. Uh, what much I say? He had, he had DPJs, but he had receivers already scored points, and so he'd have to outscore those by like a certain amount. And if that was to happen, I was going to still outscore them, kind of thing. And as you can see, I, there was a twenty-two point eight four lead on me, so I knew that he was going to be hard to catch and I wasn't like thinking I was going to win it. You know, that, that's a pretty big game. Not like a huge game, but, but an a, a above average game. And with these two offenses, they hadn't been great. So my thought process was I should get at least second place, not Kersig down to third. And of course, a lot of us know what happened. So I was in ninth place going to that game. Okay, so that's where I was. This cries guy hit that. And I was like, oh yeah, spike week number. I was happy for him, but I was like, I gotta take you down a little bit. So, and nobody behind me was even close that had any minutes. So I was like, I knew that nobody behind me had any chance of catching up to me. Unless it was like a shootout and I didn't have the quarterbacks or whatever. And even then, DPJ would probably would have been part of that. So, uh, so was that three players into the fourth quarter? So, fourth quarter, I'm sitting in second, feeling good. I'm like, they hadn't really scored any. They had just like gotten this. Like I just gotten it. And it was like the start of the fourth quarter. 
or end of the third quarter. It was like around that time. I was like, oh, thank God. Like, I, I'm pretty sure I'm at least sitting at 250. Like, no one else is going to catch me. And I was like, it'd be kind of a miracle to to, to beat J-Mac here, who I still don't know. I'd love to interview him. I'd love to apologize for, you know, beating him. Um, anywho, I uh, – so I'm like, you know, the only thing that's going to happen is if – Nah, she scores a touchdown, pretty much. But practically anything more than a two-yard touchdown, and I beat them. But the offenses were horrendous that day. They were so bad. Uh, obviously, this is me celebrating in my garage. Because I was, for about four minutes, I was just screaming, running around my house. You know, and I was like, I probably don't want to wake up my children today. So I made a little video. Uh, was it, can we hear it? I'm sleeping, but I won the best ball in my garage because I just won a million dollars and my children are sleeping, but I won the best ball. Millie Maker, baby. Let's go. I was so excited and obviously still am. You know? uh, I ended up beating him by a crud. So I was like, even if the, even if like they – Say hey, we need a scoring correction. I was up by eight point or seven point eight, uh, seven point five points. That's a big correction that I would have to lose down to to not win it. So at that point, I felt pretty comfortable that I fucking taken it down. This is the first time I'd ever taken anything down of this like fifty k and above. I guess you could say I'd never taken anything down by myself. So like this is like. This is life changing money, you know? And again, I'm not this amazing DFS player. I'm not over here trying to brag to everybody. I'm not humble. I am, well, I am humble, but I'm not at the same time. Like, if I win, I'm going to let everybody know that I won because this is yeah, not normal. Yeah, this is the team, the scoring team. This is everybody that really matters? Yeah, Tom Brady, who had to like make a comeback in that in that Jets game. I just rewatched all of Week 17. I was on an airplane. Uh, that the, the start of this game, like all these games, so I missed all of the games. So I just I just like, recently rewatched like all the games, and uh, it was a good game that they played there, and it actually worked out that AB left the field because it gave more opportunities to Rob Gronkowski. Mike Williams with a deep ball, like stud wide receiver. Cooper Cup, solid all year round. Wasn't even, didn't change in this game. So it was like, okay. I kind of knew I could rely on those two. I'm on run St. Brown, had been tearing it up. I was like, but I was like, he's on the Lions before the, like before it, the game started. He's on the Lions. Yeah, they might score a couple points. Maybe he gets the touchdowns. So maybe he'll score like 10, 15. And Jamar Chase, if anybody knows, he didn't do great the previous week. So I'm like, maybe this is his slump. You know, like he's going into the end of the season and they're just going to kind of cruise. You know, like maybe they'll, maybe it'll be a close game. Maybe I can get some points from Chase. Again, not thinking 58.6 points. And then Singletary, who shocked the living shoot out of me, man. I was not expecting this. 26 points from Devin Singletary. What a stud. What a stud. And then, of course, Najee, the man, the myth, the legend. Najee himself surprised, I think, everybody with how he put up those points and looked like a stud. And which is why I feel like he's going to take all that juice that he felt towards the end of the season. And he's going to put it into this next season and be unstoppable. And of course, the man from the University of Michigan, Tom Brady, he was just Tom Brady. Like, he was just good. Like, and he owns the Jets. It's great. It's great. So can't complain. So 
every one of these picks is like solid. Like he was a late round pick. I got him probably in the third round. I got him at the two, three turn. Uh, he was probably like a seventh or eighth round pick. Like this team got in. Look, look at these percentages, like 3% Tom Brady, 6%, 5%. Like, you got to have loan guys into the finals. But you need that 60%, 25%, 20% player to get you there. So, you mix in good ADP regular guys with some low upside, high upside low owned guys. Obviously, every one of these players was owned in every league. But what I'm saying is that the guys that if they get there, they're going to be lower owned because of that week 16. I, I, I got lucky in week 16. Like, this team only scored 160 points. Do, 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 164 points. And this C. Grogan guy, thank you for being uh, for being very unlucky. And you too, Jordy Nobes. He had – Jordy Nobes had uh, Devontae Parker, and he scored like zero points. I had nobody in that, that – I think it was a Miami versus Saints game. I had nobody in that game. And this guy had Devontae Parker, and he scored a goose egg. And this guy had Jalen Waddle in that game, but he was like 125 points. I'm like, I got this in the bag, I think, as long as Devontae Parker doesn't do anything. Jalen Wald kept like going up and up and up. I was about to have a panic attack. This guy is going to score like 60 points and like ruin my day. But he didn't. And I had that one lineup. And this is why I think advance rate is also good. I had all these teams that were in there, and I would have never thought this was going to be the team that won it. So don't like stress if you don't think every lineup that you have that advanced is good because I didn't think this team would be the, the team that would take it down. Again, it had good players, obviously. You know what I mean? But it didn't have like looking back at it now, like we know that. Yeah, he's a stud. But nobody preseason probably would have thought this team would have been great, especially after losing Fournette and Gronkowski on this team. So, like, who knows? Maybe them being out was a good thing. So injuries played in my favor in that way. So I don't know. I'm kind of rambling at this point, but. Uh, did I t- oh, yeah. And then for winning. Winning the uh, best ball Millie Maker, you get a trip to wherever they're having the Tournament of Champions. And uh, so they took us down to Phoenix. And I got a lot of fun stuff with my best friend, Will. And we got to have drinks and breakfast in front of these mountains. I was like, what is my life right now? And then him and I went out to Top Golf in Phoenix. We had some crazy, like, weird dinner at this restaurant inside the hotel that they paid for. And uh, we hooked, uh, hung out with the bartender. He made us like new drinks that he was trying out. And then we did goat yoga. It was a lot of fun, actually. Pooped on some lady next to her. No, she, he, she got peed on. It was hilarious, but I felt bad. So I was like, I had a weird feeling. It's like, oh, <laughs> Ooh, uh, well, I don't want that to happen to me, so I won't laugh. Um, this is the, the meal where you get to hang out with all the other competitors the night before, which I came in last in this thing, or I didn't come in last, but I came in fairly close enough to last time. I was well just say I was last. Uh, they gave us a jacket. Like they gave us all this cool stuff for going. And, uh, yeah, that jacket does not fit. <laughs> That's just the biggest size they had. So. so it felt like the big guy in a little coat. I uh, went down, made a little quick video. Like I sat right here with my boy. And I think that's it. Yeah. That's how I won a million dollars. That's my experience of winning a million dollars. How I won it. I just drafted two players, man. I, there was no 
strategy. I got lucky. Let's be honest. To be fair, some of those other contestants also got lucky to be there. So it's about putting yourself in the best position that last week. But again, I won it my way. You can win it your way. I'm not going to tell you your way is wrong. I'm just going to tell you how I did my way. And that was having a core group of players and nailing that core. And having confidence in that core, I don't, I'm not going to diversify my core out like crazy. Like some, the t- most people that I hear are taking 20% for the player. Dude, if you know, or if you have a gut feeling, dude, this is supposed to be for fun. You know, like it's fun, but serious at the same time. If you have a really good feeling about a player, do it, man. Go after it. Get that, get, get your guy. And get get them all. Like, who's to say that you're wrong? Like, I was right this year. I could very well be wrong with Najee 101. That's what I'm doing this year. But my recommendation to anybody who's watching this: draft the players that you think are going to be good. Don't be a homer. Some people you can be a homer, but it's pro- it, it it may not work out. I would just – that would be one suggestion I would make, you know. But just get your guys. Go. Have fun. Don't be like, man, if I would have drafted more of this guy with this combination of people, I would have won it. You know how bad that would suck to feel? That you would win – you would lose not having drafted the guy that you knew was going to be a stud. Now, if you have zero confidence or you know nothing about football, you're probably paying the rake. <laughs> but you still have an opportunity to win a million dollars. Like, who knows? Like, maybe you are like my mom and sister who are just amazing at picking things. I don't know. For some reason, my mom was amazing at picking games. She knows nothing about football. She'd pick it by helmet color or who she kind of liked. <laughs> you know? So it's like there's an element of luck. There's definitely an element of skill. I do feel like there's going to be more skill in the next couple years, but you never know what lobby you're going to get in. And you never know what kind of luck you might find. Have some confidence. Don't be afraid to get your guys and have fun. It's the best we can do. I hope you guys had a good day. Uh, Sorry for rambling here and there, but. It wouldn't be my stream without a little ramble, a little rant. That's just who I am. All right, y'all. It's been fun. It's been real. It's been real fun.